So before we jump into the video, this is exactly the animation that we'll be creating. So this is a Lottie file that I exported after I created this animation. So again, it's all beautiful. Some of the masking effects, especially with the text, aren't working, but you can obviously add any other effects as well. I mean, how amazing it is, and it only took me a few minutes to create it, and you're gonna check out in the video how to do it. Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you something incredibly awesome. I'm going to be teaching you how to easily animate your designs from Dribble directly to Lottie files using uh, Jitter. So Jitter is a tool which can easily allow you to animate your Figma designs for Dribble just to make them really fancy, eye-catching, and just really amazing. So as you can see, I have this design that was created by one of my designers. And I think this design looks amazing, which is which is why we're going to be using this for our animation. Now, the animation that I'm going to be doing uh, for this is actually going to take a lot of time, even for myself, if I was to animate it directly inside of Figma. It can be done. The same thing definitely can be done, but it's going to take a lot of time. I'm going to show you how it's going to take a fraction, just a few minutes to actually animate this design in Jitter. So let's just go ahead and actually do it. The first thing that you have to do is obviously you need to create an account on Jitter. So here's the tool. You can just go ahead and create login now, try it now, whatever it is. Once you're done, you've created an account. You need to obviously go and install the Jitter Figma plugin. And once you've done that, you should have the plugin showing up in your plugins. So once you have the frame selected that you want to animate, you just press Command P or obviously you can just go directly here and run the Jitter plugin. Then you can say, I want to have the selected frame and you want to create a new file, you want to have the selected frame exported to Jitter. You can click on export to Jitter and that's basically just going to go ahead and actually export your designs to Jitter. Usually exporting even complex layouts doesn't really take a lot of time. It's such a breeze working with Jitter and creating dribble animations that you're just going to be fascinated by it. I know I was fascinated by it. So we're going to open this particular animation that has been exported and we're just gonna go and animate these things one by one. Now, you may think that like After Effects or like other tools, you probably just have to move these things like Figma, probably move down, move up, do whatever, but that's not the case, my friend. That's definitely not the case. Actually, let me just go ahead and open this file in a, ta in a tab that's not a new, in, in incognito mode. So. In order to just animate it, you basically just get started. It's that simple. I'm going to say I want this to slide in. Done. That's done. You want and you can pair your animation so you don't have to even worry about what's visible, what's not visible. It's going to do these things automatically for you. Just select the elements and add the effect. I, I added the effect to this overall um, frame. For the first screen, I'm going to say this. Now, this thing, this image should actually grow in like this. I think that looks good. This text here should actually maybe do a masking effect. Since it's text, I think a masking effect, something like this should actually be pretty cool. And I think it is. Similarly, since this is also a text, I want to have a very similar effect for the mask and slide in. And I think this looks fine as well. For the skip button, it should slide in from the right to the left. And we've done that just like that. These uh, tours or these points or dots should also slide in, but they should slide in from the left to the right. And this single animation is done, my friends. That was it. You have the mobile coming in, you have the image growing in, you have this text coming in, skip button coming in, and all of that fancy stuff. I mean, it was, and let me just go ahead and actually increase the duration of the whole animation so we can see it. So let's have a look at it again just amazing and how easy was that i just selected the elements applied the effects nothing else now we're going to go here and we're going to say right after this animation i want to animate this dashboard we're going to do the same thing it's going to slide in from the bottom up then we're going to say this header is going to slide in from the top to bottom so we're just going to do that we're going to say this welcome quorum should actually just grow in because i think that's going to look good so something like this we have the search coming in it's completely upon us. What do we want to do with it? Maybe move and scale in something like this. I mean, do you guys see how amazing this is? I don't have to even worry about the timeline. I'm basically just selecting the elements that I want to appear and they're just doing pairing and looping the animation for me. I want this to slide in from the left. For these cards, I probably want them to 
I don't know, you tell me. It's completely up to us. Like we can say these are just gonna fade in. Well, maybe fade in is, isn't really that fancy. I'm gonna say these are gonna shrink in, something like this. And this, since it's at the bottom, this should slide in from the bottom to the top. And that, my friends, is how you create this animation. So now let's just go ahead and actually see how this looks. We have this coming in, the categories, the cards, and this mobile device. I think there's been a break here, so we're just gonna go ahead and actually bring these things together. So now that we have this together, we're gonna go to this other screen. We're gonna say this is also gonna slide in from the bottom up. We have these three images. We're gonna say these should grow in or whatever or maybe move and scale in, and this should come from the top instead of at the bottom. Then we have this text. We're gonna say this is basically just gonna, I don't know, since for the text we were doing a mask and slide in, it's gonna mask and slide in. Similarly, this text is also gonna mask and slide in. I mean, I don't even know how amazing this tool is. Like, can you see how much, how little effort I actually have to do to animate these things? So we have this coming in, the text coming in, this coming in. Then for this particular thing, I'm gonna say this is this five days that you actually see, this is actually gonna, let's say, grow in, something like this. Then we have the price. We're gonna say the price is gonna come in from the left. And the book now button, since the book now button is actually, let me just see if this is the book now button. Yes, it is. This should twist in or whatever. I mean, how easy was that? I basically built this animation in front of you without even thinking about the timeline, without even thinking about the effects and all of that stuff. Now, if we just play this, well, let, let me just go ahead and actually uh, tweak my animation to for it to end exactly here so we can have a looping animation. And let's just go ahead and have a look at this animation. Space, this growing in, beautiful stuff. Like how much effort did it took and how many seconds did it took? I'm not even sure like how many, but I think this bookmark icon actually remained accidentally. So we're just gonna go ahead and have it within the cards. So here is the bookmark icon. We're just gonna move it within the cards. So it's probably here. So now we have this coming in, we have this. All of this was done just by clicking on elements and just adding the effect. All of this got paired automatically. I mean, isn't that amazing? And maybe I wanna tweak certain animations. Maybe this book now thing is just taking a bit too much time based on my own preference to actually appear. So I'm gonna say this shouldn't be two seconds. This should just be one second, my friend. And once we've done that, we can obviously go ahead and say that the animation should just end here. And this is the animation. We can loop it as well. As you can see here, we can say this should loop automatically. And now every time the animation ends, basically, as you can see, it's automatically gonna loop. Now, once you've done that so easily, what do you do with it? Well, you can export it. You can export it in video, whether it's 480, 720, 1080, or whether it's the exact size that you have, which is 1X or half the size. Same goes with the GIFs. And what's amazing about this tool is you can actually export it in Lottie. So I'm gonna click on Lottie and it's gonna basically just export it directly into Lottie for me. It's obviously gonna take some time, but it's gonna export it. There are certain things that obviously don't work since this Lottie export feature is in beta, but I mean, it's amazing. Now, how fast is Lottie for you? I mean, come on, man, and just have a look at it. Like how long did, did this Lottie animation take? You have a JSON file, you have a JSON file, you don't even have a video. I mean, isn't that amazing? Like, I'm not sure if you guys think that's amazing. I personally think it's really great. So again, that's just something that I wanted to show. And actually you have an optimized Lottie option as well if I think you have a paid plan or something. So, I mean, it's just like the ease of it, right? Even if I was doing this in After Effects, it wouldn't be as easy. I don't think there's any tool right now that makes animating designs, your Figma designs, for Dribble, for Behance, this easy. So I definitely do recommend, check it out. Play around with it. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.